भोभीक्षीन पापनं सांतानं वितरागिनं मुमुक्षुनं पेक्ष्योयम् आत्मबोधो विधीयते क्षीन पापनं or those who have purified themselves, tapo bihi, by austerities such as sense control and meditation, santanang, or those who are calm, vitaraginang, or those who are free from cravings, mumukshunang, for those who are desirous of liberation, ayang, this, Atma bodaha, knowledge of the self, vidhiyate, being composed by me, apekshaha, worthy of regard. For those who have been purified through austerities, who are peaceful in heart, free from cravings, and desirous of liberation, this Atma boda composed by me is worthy of your attention. Namaste. So, the opening verse of Atma Bodha, like the opening verse in almost every Vedic literature, states the purpose, the audience, and the basic message of the entire work. So, I'm going to go through the Sanskrit terms and give more detailed definitions and discussions of the meaning. And then we're going to take a perspective view of the whole book and see how that is expressed in the opening verse. So the first verse begins with Kshina Papanam. Kshina means destruction. Papanang means of sins. So those who have destroyed their sins. See, sadhana is not a positive thing. It's not that we're building up something. We're breaking something down. And what is that? Are non-spiritual activities. Actually, everything that's born of duality has to be removed. And of course, the first thing is the sinful activities, the activities that cause pain and suffering for others and for ourselves. So, in many cases, this is a matter of diet, vegetarian diet offered to the deity before taking, and uh, abstention from intoxication, uh, no uh, liquor or drugs or anything like that. Some teachers go as far as prohibiting coffee and tea. So these consciousness-changing uh, substances, cigarettes and any kind of drugs, even prescription drugs can have influence on consciousness. So these things have to be removed. Neti neti. We're removing all the things that block our self-realization, our enlightenment, which is already there. It's just covered up with upadis. One by one, these upadis have to be removed. And upadi is anything that is born of duality. So the first thing that has to go is the sinful activities, harmful activities. Then, tapo bihi, by austerities. Austerities means sense control. That, well, for example, getting rid of uh, non-vegetarian food, which is harmful to animals, and intoxication, which is harmful to oneself. So these things have to be given up before one is qualified to begin the study of yoga and meditation. And when I say yoga here, I don't mean, you know, 
twisting yourself into a pretzel and standing on your head. <laughs> I mean the connection, linking of the individual soul to the super soul, the Atman or Brahman. Santanang, for those who are calm. This knowledge is not for passionate people. If you're running around trying to make a lot of money, trying to be involved in politics, involved in sex life, involved in fame, name, money, position, power, and all that, you're not qualified. Don't even bother. Because everything you're doing is covering up your real self. So until you get rid of that, until you renounce all that passionate activity, you're not qualified because passion is the cause of suffering. Well, so is ignorance. <laughs> there are many coordinate causes but passionate activities is one of the most harmful and most disqualifying things that a person can have. So first you have to remove all these things and calm down. <laughs> if you have to change your diet, if you have to go on a retreat somewhere away from the stresses of ordinary life, do it because the result is more than worthwhile. Vitaraginam, for those who are free from cravings. Actually, raga means attachment. Attachment to specific sensations, feelings, emotions, relationships, and so on. If you're involved in sex life, that's going to make so much disturbance, so much noise, that it's going to make self-realization practically impossible. This is why celibacy is strongly recommended in all phases of sadhana, unless you happen to be initiated into the mysteries of tantra. And I don't mean the false tantra, neo-tantra or whatever you want to call it, that is simply an excuse for sexual indulgence. Unless the goddess is being worshipped, it's not really tantra. So anyway, you should be prepared to let go of these attachments and obsessions to certain sensations, emotions, relationships, and so on that are basically, again, covering up the truth of who we really are. And then the most important one, mumukshunang, one who is craving, desirous, obsessed with, self-realization. This is the one desire, this is the one type of egotism that is encouraged in spiritual life. That I want out of here. I am so done with this. I am sick and tired of material life, being born in a material body and suffering like anything. I'm done with it. I want out of here. This is mamukshatvam, the desire for liberation. And this is the most important qualification because it empowers all the other things you have to do. I am this, atma bodaha, knowledge of the self. Well, in the previous video, we went through all the definitions of atma and bodha and atma bodha. So take a look at that video if you haven't seen it. And then finally, Vidhiyate, being composed by me, the author, Shankaracharya, Apekshyaha. This is worthy of regard for the people described in the first part of the shloka who are purified, who have performed austerities, who are calm, free from craving, and desirous of liberation. If this describes you, this book is for you. If you're not like this, don't waste your time. 
because we're not going to talk about anything that's interesting for those who are passionate, for those who are engaged in sinful activities, for those who are harming others, harming themselves, and so on, who don't desire liberation, don't even bother. So this is the statement of qualifications. We also recently published a video on the qualifications for spiritual life. And these same qualifications are noted here in the original verse. So then, what is he doing? He's basically giving people who are serious about spiritual life a reason to read the book. He's encouraging those readers who are qualified to study the book. And why is that? Because as we'll see, the wisdom of the Upanishads is distilled into these shlokas, these 84 or 86 shlokas of Atma Bodha. This is why he is advising them, encouraging them to read the book, because maybe they're not qualified strictly to read the Upanishads. The Upanishads are only for sannyasis. Maybe the student is a young person or a middle-aged person in uh, student life or trying to make a career in household life, trying to raise children and so on. But deep down, they have a desire for spiritual liberation. This book is for them to prepare themselves for the sadhana that they will have to perform later on when they do renounce everything and they finally come to the position where all sinful things, all distractions are given up, and they can take sannyas, or at least they can leave activities of family life and live an austere, renounced lifestyle, because this is the kind of life that leads to liberation. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya.